Welcome to Mastering and Guide Learning Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. Before I start uh, this lecture, I would like to request from all of you. Uh, I put a survey or poll uh, in the channel at the section of the community related that if you like, we have live stream every week and we have interaction uh, one by one live and answer to your question and your response uh, make decision uh, and determine if we have this live stream every week or not. I appreciate your participation. Now let's go for this uh, part. Here we have a patient, 63 years old guy, and uh, for some suspicious finding on EKG and exceptional dyspnea and discomfortness on the chest, patient has been sent to for echo. Here we have a tree view of the apical for wall motion, uh, zoom in on apical two, apical three, and apical four. And uh, the report has been uh, published as a normal EF and no wall motion abnormality. Except the, those optimizing a little, we can decrease the gain or decrease the uh, compression or dynamic range and optimizing a little better, but still we can see most of the wall. Most of the wall on the anterior here, a little posterior is not clear, but still we can see it on the apical, still conclusive, not very uh, perfect, but still we can see here apical two and here on the zoom apical two. Do you think this is normal echo or, uh, or not? Uh, what is problem with this view? this apical tree. Is that correct apical tree or not? And do you see any abnormal finding in any of those clips? If you were tech, what did you do? What do you do in this case, especially? Now, let's go see the next part. Here, three months after the first study, uh, the patient has been sent for echo again because the symptom uh, still was there and the other study looks normal. Uh, we did uh, the same with the same machine. As you can see, apical tree. Here uh, we have RV focus view. Looks like the left ventricle squeezing, not bad. Apical 4 is a little more decreased compared to the previous study. An apical tree doesn't uh, differences too much between the previous study. But when we do one maneuver, only that maneuver that is, is critical in all cases, especially those important pathology like the wall motion abnormality, endocarditis, uh, unknown murmur, all those stuff. If we want to have one maneuver that is the most important maneuver we have to do is sweeping or fanning in each area, each view and each window. Here we did the same with fanning. At this level with a little, you can see it's not bad. Even a little inferior mid segment show a little here, not a little significant uh, hypokinetic. But in this view is much better. Suddenly we can see there is some punching out and defect on the apex close to the inferior wall. So with fanning and zooming and all those stuff, finally we can see there is some defect that most probably I am going to explain uh, why this is aneurysm. Anyway, uh, the point of this case was uh, only showing how much is important uh, the sweeping or fanning uh, maneuver in echo, especially in those cases. The previous study, it was something uh, abnormal too. Let's go back and see what was the abnormal. Now let's look at more accurate and in detail uh, to the, the previous study. As you can see on this view, especially in this apical too, it looks like squeezing very well. 
you can see here internal diameter decrease myocardium thickness apex move but the problem with this one is as you can uh, notice all of you uh, or most of you is uh, moving into the went down apex means it's off axis we are not in the real correct apical tree when apex here moving in too much means you are off axis so you cannot evaluate apex on this view posterior wall is a little suspicious how you know even in the cardio is not clear how you know I, I say this is this part is not normal functioning if you see the diameter at this level basal on apical tree it doesn't decrease even here myocardium thickening but here this diameter internal left ventricular diameter at the base and almost at the mid doesn't decrease even is not 100 percent we have to make better sure if we need it even we can uh, with maneuver if still we cannot see the pla uh, this apical tree go apical tree exactly at the same view maybe you can see more clear that myocardium has thickening or not if you still are suspicious go do definitely anyway so that is the problem with this apical tree and this one you can see the mid segmental at uh, we cannot see apex here very well on this view even it looks like apical too but a little here we don't see a left atrium but we can see a little off a little different angle of this one so suddenly you can see this part is completely akinetic or severe hypokinetic mid inferior and inferior uh, basal inferior and mid inferior all almost severe hypokinetic or akinetic and even if a little focus in some breathing you can see we have some defect on this area so it was there at the beginning but because of the view both uh, was probably the tech uh, make uh, miss it this one and uh, based on those images that uh, take uh, submit to the cardiologist cardiologist uh, for many reasons reported this uh, normal anyway so the patient had that time those problem too let's go to the our uh, back to our new study as you can see here uh, is very obvious we have uh, here some defect on the apex so at this step at this stage what should you do you show it this one and now what what should you do as a general rule whenever you have any abnormal finding in the heart or even in everywhere always put color always do doppler on that area for many reasons it helped a lot for the mechanism and pathology of that finding we, we first we start with the regular default as a setup for the prf if it doesn't help us we can decrease our scale or prf a little little by little decrease and see if there is any blood flow over that area or not is that there is any blood clot or not if the blood can go through that area or not if it goes beyond that area or not so the, the color doctor is very important in that case that in in is this two clips you can see in this apical uh, feeling endocardium showing here you can see that defect filled with the uh, color so we have some blood flow that area there is not thrombosis but it's not 100 percent many cases is not 100 percent in that those cases we is better we do definitely or any other contrast study uh, for making sure uh, if that is a pseudoaneurysm or aneurysm or other pathology that we are going to talk about that after you show it uh, all those features then you have to go measure it how you measure it you go during systole and diastole is better both that you show both uh, size does the size of that defect has changed or not depth and width and based on those finding 
we can determine uh, what what is exactly the pathology we are dealing with now is question here how we can differentiate it, this defect like this case from the diverticulum cleft or crypt or uh, aneurysm how you can differentiate those uh, four pathology from each other based on the echo the defect in continuity of the myocardium can be categorized in four group recess crypt or cleft diverticulum and aneurysm that each of them has a specific feature in recess and uh, crypt we have a defect usually v-shape or cylindric shape or in a simple word we have a cleft cleft or groove inside of the myocardium uh, that if it goes uh, more than 50 percent in some literature more than 30 percent uh, that occupy this imagination more than 50 percent we called it crypt or uh, cleft if it's less than 50 percent we called it recess in the verticulum <coughs> the myocardium and the wall of the ventricle bulging out or out punching it looks like bumping out and the border of the outside of the myocardium has been disrupted that it show as a bulging in uh, and aneurysm is the same but there are a little differences between aneurysm and diverticulum first of all aneurysm has very wide neck or entrance or orifice or mouth here but the diverticulum has small neck or mouth on that and second in the diverticulum still we have uh, myocardium tissue and with contraction during systole still we can see thickening at that level and the orifice or mouth of the diverticulum decreased during systole in aneurysm uh, we don't have this uh, feature during uh, we don't have first of all myocardium is fibrotic tissue not myocardium and we don't see uh, contraction and thickening of the that area uh, uh, out, bulging out during systole in recess during systole that defect disappear we don't see uh, any more that invagination or uh, crack in the crypt is almost most of the time is the same uh, feature during systole in disappear i will show you in the next slide diverticulum the same manner here we have a crypt or cleft as you can see during diastole is very obvious cylindric or v-shaped defect and the myocardium uh, most of the time is inferoceptal or inferior and during systole that being disappeared it doesn't show and with color we can see blood a little goes inside of that too and is more than and occupy more than 50 percent of the wall uh, myocardium thickness here we have those four type of the defect on the myocardium we have a diverticulum as you can see here most of the time the diverticulum is on the inferior or inferior wall or inferior septal uh, inferior part posterior septal of the septum we can see that one here we have uh, as you can see uh, aneurysm at the septum this in this case is specific is non-compact cardiomyopathy here we have in a cleft uh, or crypt uh, on the inferior wall close to the uh, basal uh, segment and here we have recess uh, multiple recess in 
non-compact left ventricular cardiomyopathy. I have to mention here that the cleft or crib is more common in the, those two situations, non-compact cardiomyopathy and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. In those cases that the echo doesn't give us very clear and conclusive result, we can uh, go and we have to go and do uh, CMR, uh, magnetic resonance imaging of the heart, or if it's not still suspicious or not available, we can do CT scan. The most important feature that differentiated those congenital anomaly from the abnormal uh, aneurysm is myocardial tissue and contraction. In aneurysm, aneurysm, we don't have myocardium and we don't uh, we have wall motion abnormality and we don't see contraction at that spot at all. But in other uh, type, always we have myocardium and we can see during systole that part is contracting normal. So the future, just remember, whenever you see any defect on the myocardium, look at the wall motion and thickening of the myocardium. If the, that part is has myocardial thickening during systole and uh, there is not any other ab wall motion abnormality, those goes to the, those congenital, one of them can be diverticular or crypt, cleft or recess. That is the most important in those cases that still we are suspicious, we can do uh, MRI of the heart and uh, get the result almost close to the 100%. Here is the algorithm for approaching those patients. You can pause it and study and review by yourself. Now let's go to, back to our second study that we did. Here, as you can see, patient has wall motion abnormality, especially on this view, you can see mid uh, inferior here, and apical inferior and apex, completely almost severe hypokinetic or akinetic, and we don't see myocardium, fibrotic tissue. If you want to make sure, zoom in on that. Uh, you can see a little scar tissue at that level or fibrotic tissue, no myocardium, no thickening beside of wall motion abnormality. This patient has 100% aneurysm, not diverticulum, not cleft, not those congenital anomaly. As you know, and I mentioned in many uh, clips, the fundamental principle of the ultrasound is the same as the Echo, uh, CT scan and MRI. All of them create image from cross-section surface. And the thickness of that, uh, or in other words, resolution or width resolution in ultrasound or echo is about one to two millimeter. So in other words, when we get any view, just our sound is cutting with the thickness of one millimeter or maximum two millimeter at that area and create a picture from that cross-section surface. And so if you uh, go and review the protocol, when we are scanning in any view, just we are scanning and taking image from one millimeter of that spot, one millimeter. And you know, the heart has a three dimension with the width and length completely different. Width is about 10, millimeter, 10 centimeter and length about uh, 15 centimeter or little more, depending on body habitus. So just keep in your mind when you scanning and following the protocol, you're just getting image cross-section from one millimeter of that spot, not the, all of it. The only way you don't, you will not miss any pathology in echo, ultrasound or echo, is you surveying in that area. How we survey each area? 
with just Fanny. The most important maneuver in ultrasound echo is a fanning or sweeping, or sometimes they call tilting or angling, but most common is fanning. Fanning means we angling or tilting the probe at the direction of the short axis. We have long axis, long axis, and short axis. If we tilting or angling uh, the line of the short axis, we call it fanning. In that case, we can sweep that area. If I, I am not going to exaggerate, just with this maneuver, I detect more than hundreds uh, undetected uh, pathology, important pathology that in previous study they miss it just with this maneuver. For example, here in AP, uh, on the plaques, you can you know that our sector sound passed through this region, this line, not region, this line, one millimeter at this level, at the middle of the uh, apical, uh, the anterior scallop two and posterior scallop two. So at this line. So if imagine if you have some pathology on here, on here or there, you can miss it on the plaques at least. How you do it? If you have any pathology, important pathology and mitral valve on the plaques, just you need it fan it to the left and your right, right and left. So fan it handle this way and that way. The best way is that start from the plaques, fan to your left until the uh, mitral valve disappear and start showing RVIT. In that case, make it uh, sweep slowly fan to the your right so in that case you sweep and survey scanning all the mitral valve and if there is anything in your uh, you see it you can go and focus on and capture it on your plaques or if you are going to do on the orta for example you have a TAVR or AVR, artificial valve replacement, you have to survey all the lens top to bottom of the valve. So when you are short access, you are short fanning up until aortic valve disappear and fanning down until LVO to show up. That is the way you survey. Or in apical for uh, even you go apical four and five for the aorta, but it's better for wall motion before you get it classic apical four, just survey, fan up and down basal view to the apical five and even more and watch the wall motion if it's specific is wall motion or thrombosis or intracardiac pathology you want to check it out. Just it take only five seconds from the bottom to the top, you survey and fanning or in the apical two, fan to your left and right at the same, and you can continue exactly survey, not only mitral valve, in this apical two, you can survey tricuspid valve two. How? Just from apical two, fan more to your left until tricuspid show up, you can survey tricuspid, for example, if there is any pathology, vegetation, or anything, you can check and survey in this view very well. Or even you can uh, uh, catch any TR. Or in apical tree, the same. You're finding this way, left and right. You survey that area that you are looking for. I noticed that many tech, they have hard time to get a jet clearly, especially neck of the jet and creating and capturing PISA for measurement PISA. The technique is the same. The principle is the same. As you imagine, this is your apical four chamber line that passed through the mitral valve. So you cannot catch it if there is any defect at this level. In apical uh, four chamber classic, if you want to go, you cannot see it. The only way you can capture any jet in that valve is that you fanning up and down slowly until jet show up. In this case, as you can see, there are two jet in different level. So with the sweeping up and down gently, you can capture all of them. When you found it, you can zoom on it, focus on it, and 
do whatever you need for your study. And the other valve the same for the tricuspid. All valve sweeping is the most or fanning is the most important maneuver during scanning. I hope it was useful. Up to the next time, have a wonderful time. And please don't forget to uh, respond to the poll.